that's you. How? Yin Li Hao? The man nods in acknowledgement, then he points at me. Sona. So, no. He rolls my name around his tongue several times, doesn't ask for my last name, and I don't bother to give it. Instead, he points at the picture of my father, then sweeps his hand through the air. When he speaks, he carefully enunciates his words, still gesturing around the room. I know he's asking for my father again. I don't know what else to say, so I point at the picture. I repeat my father's name. I take the newspaper photo and rip it to shreds. <laughs> oh, God. Hey! What are you doing? Toss the torn up pieces on the floor. How lunges after them. I watch him passively as he sinks to his knees, frantically scooping the paper fragments into his hands. Zai Zai Chan Song Wu Xian. As he slowly rises to his feet, Hao's face is twisted by the darkest, most murderous scowl I've ever seen. I meet his gaze without flinching, then draw my finger like a knife across my neck. Goodbye for good. At last, Hao's eyes widen in understanding. Trembling, he carefully and reverently places the remains of the photograph in his briefcase and bows his head towards the ground. His eyes grow bright with contained tears, but he doesn't make a sound. After several minutes of solemn silence, there's a sharp click. I look up to see how snapping his briefcase shut. He methodically dusts off his suit, straightens his tie, and walks out without saying a word. The slam of the door, though, resounds throughout the entire room. Sighing, I release the breath I hadn't realized I'd been holding. Sajan to you, too, Hao. Just like Song Wu Xian. I guess you and I will never meet again. I didn't remember that this at the time. But the literal the literal translation of Zai Jian isn't goodbye for good. It's actually see you again. Ah. Uh... <laughs> Agitato. This is cute little sketch jibbies. Yeah. Next practice, I'm running late as usual. Also as usual, one of the orchestra members calls my cell phone to check up on me. What's new, however, is the near hysterical pitch in her voice. Sona, please come quickly. It's an emergency. Uh-huh, this had better be good. Because if it's something lame like another scheduling problem or picking what songs to play, I don't care if... I'm cut off by a loud crash and frantic sounds in the bathroom, back room, background. Oh, shit. Ah, I need to go. Please hurry. What the heck? I arrive at the practice room, flushed and winded from my long run. When I try to open the door, it doesn't budge. Huh? They never lock this door during practice. I fumble around my pockets for this, my spare key. I need to get in there. Apprehension building, I shove in the key and wrench the door open. <laughs> <laughs> now you're doing it. <laughs> the fucking growl. <laughs> Can I do it? <laughs> oh my God. God. Too funny. Holy hell. What the heck is going on? My eyes widen in shock. Half the orchestra is hiding in the back of the room, surrounded by a ramshackle barricade of chairs and music stands. You're that fucking terrified? The other half is trembling in their usual seats, stumbling their way through Vivaldi's spring concerto. To my surprise, none other than Yin Li Hao is presiding over the conductor's podium. The baton in his right hand moves in swift, fluid arcs in time with the music. Or it would be in time with the music, I guess, if the orchestra hadn't had or if the orchestra actually had any sense of rhythm, I can see how wincing painfully with every bumbled note and mistiming cue. His grip on the baton gets tighter and tighter until he finally holds up a hand, stomps off the podium, and starts yelling at the percussionist. Dude, I really, really have to go to the bathroom. Let me just leave for five minutes. As he tries to get up, Howe holds his arm out of an arm in front of him. He stabs repeatedly at the page on the percussionist's music stand. <laughs> Okay, growl, goddammit. 
Uh, more Chinese, that's incomprehensible. Incomprehensible. How? He needs to go to the bathroom. Let him go. Else, there's, else things in here are going to get even more unpleasant than they already are. At the sound of my voice, Hao turns around and finally notices me. Sona! Yeah! What are you doing here? You've been terrible with this orchestra. How dare you make such a shambles of your father's orchestra? That's just what I'm assuming he's saying. I'm not sure what he's ranting about now, but I think I hear my name. It sounds like he's scolding me, probably for being late, given how empathetically he's pointing at the clock. Yeah, yeah, bad sauna, bad sauna. Now let the guy go to the bathroom. Bathroom. Washroom. Restroom. Do you get what I'm saying at all? I hesitate, not sure of the most appropriate gestures for explaining what a bathroom is. The percussionist takes advantage of the distraction to race for the door. Hey! Without a shout, with a shout, Hao chases him into the hallway. I can hear him yelling in Chinese all the way down the corridor. Sighing in aggravation, I turn to the shell-shocked orchestra members. Okay, that man is clearly trespassing. Again. Please tell somebody... Please tell me somebody called the police this time. Well, we thought about it, but he actually hasn't hurt anyone. Though we did throw a few chairs. And it looks like he was a friend of Mr. Song. So we didn't want to get him arrested. The basis indicates a small picture frame that I hadn't noticed hanging on the conductor's podium. Upon closer inspection, I realized it's holding in the photo of Howe and my father that I tore up. The paper is crisscrossed with lines upon lines of painstakingly applied scotch tape. <sighs> you really cared about it that much, huh? Yeah, it's probably one of the last pictures he has with him. Of course he cares about it. It was his teacher, and he was in the newspaper with him. That's awesome. Plus, if that guy knew Mr. Song, then he's probably a really good conductor as well. We could really use someone like that. Well, if we could understand even half of what he's saying, that is. There's another crash at the door. How is his return, dragging the now squirming percussionist by his shirt collar. Let go, crazy man! Somebody get up here and help me! Loud footsteps hurry down the hallway. Everyone freezes as a security guard pokes his head into the room. What's going on in here? Is everyone alright? Crap, this is getting out of hand. Suppressing another sigh, I march over and pry Howe's hand off the percussionist's shirt. The poor musician instantly scrambles out the door, clutching at the front of his pants. <laughs> the fucking girl. I tighten my gripper on Howe's hand despite his protests. See you later, guys. Me and Howe are going to talk for a bit. Keep, in, keep on practicing or cowering or whatever floats your boat. Slamming the door shut behind us, I drag Howe into the hallway. He manages to yank his hand out of mine after several seconds of struggling and points back at the practice room. So what is... They, they need conducting? They're terrible? What are you doing with them? You're... S not good, Sona. You're not good. You're no good at all. Your father was brilliant. How are you so terrible? Okay. Sona. What are you... All the things I said. Besides my name, he keeps saying one word I recognize. Yanshi. Practice. My father rarely had time to talk to me as a child, but when he did, that was the word he used most often. Yanshi. He'd bark it every five seconds whenever he listened to me play the piano. Yanshi. He'd punctuate each shout by smacking the wall with a steel ruler. Yanshi. I think I'm mispronouncing it, of course. Every time I missed a note. Lian Shi! Or slouched too much. Lian Shi! Or didn't curve my fingers. I never used the ruler on my... He never used the ruler on my hands, but I was always afraid he would. Maybe that's one of the reasons I never practiced as much as he expected me to. Howe still stared at me, foot tapping impatiently against the door. That intensity in his eyes is as striking as ever. Howe's in a completely different league for me, isn't he? He's much more like my father than I'll ever be. Yeah, how I know. Lian Shi, Lian Shi. You definitely were my father's student, were you? You must have really looked up to him. I'm surprised he didn't leave his precious little orchestra to you instead of me. I keep going, even though I'm talking more to myself than to Hao at this point. Is that what you're here for? You want to take over Song Lushan's orchestra? If so, then be my guest. Yes.